300 Christians needed to change the spiritual temperature of this nation forever. Are you one of them? The Bible says creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God for this end time. You don't have to be a pastor or someone in a leadership position in a church to be part of this great move of God. All you need is a genuine hunger for the kingdom of God to be established on earth. Pastor Sunday Adelaja, the pastor of the largest church in Europe, the Embassy of God, is initiating a move of God in this nation called the History Makers Bible School. The History Makers Bible School takes place only on one Saturday every month to equip you for the next level. It will also be a good opportunity to network with like-minded Christians. You will receive tried and tested keys to church growth and pastoring without tears at the Emmanuel Center, 9 to 23 Marsham Street, Victoria, London, Southwest 1P 3DW. Registration is 40 pounds per session. To register, call 0798 114 6157 or email admin at hmbsuk.org or visit the website at www.hmbsuk.org. Whatever you do, don't miss this move of God. Call the number on the screen now to register. Remember, you were called for a time like this. Hello and welcome to the program. Yemi Balogun is my name. And with me in the studio is uh, Pastor Sunday Adelaja, who is the senior pastor of the Embassy of God in Kiev in the Ukraine. God has used him mightily to build a ministry just from about seven people to over 29,000 people in a particular building, church. And apart from that, over 100,000 members across the nation of the Ukraine ministering to over 7 million people on a daily basis. When you hear that kind of figure in this kingdom, you know that's a revolution. And to know more about how he managed to do that, we've been talking about every aspect of his ministry and his, his own personal life. In this particular program, we're going to be talking about relationship, about marriage, about his home. How does he manage to combine, you know, balance things at home with what he's doing, especially with the huge number of uh, members that he's got? And then also to talk about other doctrinal issues. We'll be touching on the area of deliverance, healing, tithing. Because I know some of you don't even want to pay the tithe in the first place. So you keep asking, should we tithe or should we not? Is it a New Testament idea or not? Is it the law? But in this program, we're going to be touching all those areas. God bless you as you continue to watch. Yeah, well, what I believe is that if you uh, are having problem with your family as a minister and you think that... Uh, uh, your wife needs to make the concessions and, you know, needs to compromise and just keep quiet. I think that uh, that's not fair towards the lady because you didn't make such a deal with her when, when you wanted to marry her. When you wanted to marry her, you were telling her she's the prince of the world, I mean, she's the princess of the world and that you are going to love her and keep her and do everything for her. And she was expecting that you are going to keep to your world. So uh, I don't think it's fair for us to put our family in second place and say because we want to serve God. There is a difference between God, working with God, and the ministry. I've come to discover that ministry, you know, going to preach or minister or do things for me in ministry, that is um, enjoyment part. That's the enjoyment part. That is because it's sweet to be under the anointing and it's sweet to do what you love to do. You know, you just want to enjoy yourself. But if you just focus on that, that is a little bit egocentric as well. But when it comes to family, that <coughs> is sacrifice. So f sacrificing is not easy. And uh, that, so for, 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 as far as I'm concerned, ministry is, is easy, it's cheap. Re the real thing that really takes sacrifice from my side are two things. Number one, I've discovered that it's much more painful and much more expensive for me, to me, to seek the Lord regularly every month, to pay the price, 
to go away from my family, from the church, from everything I'm doing, and take a week off on a regular basis, that is much more difficult than to take care of my wife or my family. To stay with my wife and just take care of them is not easy. I need to sacrifice because there are demands and things like that. No, sorry, that's, that's a mistake I'm making. Uh, it's easier to take, to, it's, sorry, much more difficult for me to take time off than to do ministry. To do ministry is easy. It's easy for me to do ministry and uh, just you know, go to preach and all that. That is not a big deal. But the most important thing, my, there are two major things that uh, I, I have to use energy to do. I have to uh, take determination, determination and focus to keep going on. That is, uh, that, no, that is to, keep, to, to keep myself busy with God, to work personally with Him, and to, you know, to maintain a standard with Him. That is much more difficult than to do ministry. That's number one. The second thing that I really spend energy to do is to keep my wife happy. If those two things are much more difficult than to do ministry. To do ministry. So it's, it's about priority. So my first priority, therefore, is that 50% of my life, I have got to spend maybe 40, 40, 45%. Between between 40 and 50%, I've got to spend on God. Then about, uh, let's say, uh, 40% I've got to spend on family and the rest for for ministry. So basically I would say the thing that I really need to uh, use strength for uh, seeking after God and pleasing my wife. And the rest, which is ministry, is like hobby to me. If you could have good relationship with God, find time for God and dedicate your, you know, and put him as priority and find time to really spend time with him, ministry will become so easy. It will be like a hobby. And then, of course, the, most, the second most difficult one is to, to keep your woman happy. You know, but according to scripture, it says, if your wife is not happy with you, if you go to pray, God won't answer. That's right. Is that a good interpretation of that scripture? That is a good, that is a word-to-word interpretation of it. So it's not, it doesn't make any sense running about to go and uh, do ministry when you already have your path to God blocked anyway. When God has said that if you are not going to keep your wife happy, God is not going to answer your prayers. So uh, then it, it's showing, it's pointing to us what our priority should be. It means that our priority should be our homes, our family, and our partners. So focus on keeping, I personally don't go to preach. It's not worth it. So I will not leave my house at all. I will not even step out of my door if my wife is not satisfied and happy. I mean, who am I going to impress if I don't impress the closest person to me? Wow. And you know, last some time ago when I interviewed you, you said something which was quite interesting that uh, that if that you know you, you you prefer your wife to the church. Yes. Because you said God ministered to you that if your church if for for some reason your members leave today, yes. the only person you'll be left with is your wife. Yeah, so God God spoke to me about that a long time ago, that you don't really have anything apart from your family. You don't have any, anything apart from God and your, and your family. Because if, God forbid, I fall into sin today, or God removes his hand from me, uh, I will just be an ordinary man. And once I become an ordinary person, I bet you that the members of the church will find another hero, and they will find another church. And, uh, you know, and they will just say, well, he has fallen into sin. That's what is happening to all men who fall, oh, have fallen into sin. People forget all the good they have done. People forget the fact that through these men, you got born again, or God used you, I mean, God used them to bless you, or God used them to elevate you. Uh, People forget about all the good you've done. People just put a cross on you. They just cancel you. And you you don't have anybody. You, You don't have those members. You think they love you, they don't. They only love the fact that you could bless them. They love themselves, basically. They love the anointing on you. They love the fact that they could receive something from you. That's why they are coming to you, not to other churches. As soon as they find other people that they could give them better things than you do, they go there. 
And especially if they have an excuse to say, oh, he has fallen into sin, so what can I do? What do you expect me to do? He's the fallen. He's the... So you don't really have anything apart from your family. And so you better put, you better treasure them Amen. and put your spouse as a priority over the ministry. Wonderful. And another thing you shared was that uh, God was showing you that you have to be careful not to fall in love with what you think is his work. But in reality, you fall in love with his own bride because the church is his bride. <laughs> so if you're putting all your energy <laughs> into running the church, you're falling in love with, the, with his own bride and you're neglecting your own bride. <laughs> yes, that lesson is from John chapter 22. Is that the last chapter of St. John chapter 22? When John, God, uh, Jesus was talking to uh, Peter, and P he said, Peter, three times, do you love me more than this? He said, yes, I do. He said, feed my, my lamb, he said, my, my flock. He said, do you love me more than this? Feed my flock, throw it and feed my flock. So, but you, it, from there you could get, you could learn the fact that God is putting, what God is, what Jesus is putting as a priority. He's saying, do you love me? If you love me, prove it by feeding my lamb, my, my, my sheep. Do you love me? So the priority is not to love the ministry. Jesus is saying, don't fall in love with the ministry. Don't fall in love with the, with the, with the flock, with the, with the sheep. Don't fall in love with the, with the flock, with, 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 with the people, feed my sheep. Don't fall in love with the, with the congregation, with the ministry. Love me, fall in love with me. Do you love me? Let your focus be always on me. Just love me, me. Do you love me? Love me but feed the lamb, feed the sheep, feed the congregation. Just feed them. Don't get attached to them emotionally. Don't get attached to the church. Don't fall in love with the church. Fall in love with me. Fall in love with the bridegroom, not with, the, what, not with his bride. It's not your bride. It's his, his bride. Don't commit the sin of adultery right in the church. And then don't commit adultery with Jesus' bride. It's one thing to commit adultery with women, with other people, but it's another thing to commit adultery with the, with the church, with the bride of Christ. Then you are in real, real trouble. So, so it's, and it's very close. It's very easy to fall in love with the church because when you are uh, on the stage all the time, the oil is upon you, the anointing is over you, people treasure you, people value you, people fall in love with the anointing, people see the hand. This is something unique in you. And they begin to fall in love with you, but you think it's with you, but it's not really with you. They don't love you. They are falling in love with that oil. They are falling in love with that anointing. So then you want to respond. You think it's you they are loving. Then when you respond to that, you get attached to the church. And when the oil leaves, when the anointing leaves, you, then they begin to disappoint you. Or you do something to offend them, they will break your heart. The danger of falling in love with the, with the church rather than the, 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 the bridegroom with Christ is that, that if you fall in love with the church, that same church will break your heart. Wow. But Jesus will never. Wonderful. Another question that a lot of ministers would probably like to ask you is that you've been in this field for a long time. You've managed to combine wife and family with the work. How do you make a woman happy? How do you keep her happy so that she's constantly cooperating with you in the field, when you're there or you're not there. <laughs> I like that topic. <laughs> I like that subject. Because I think that my wife probably will testify to the fact that I try as much as possible to keep her happy. Number one, have some principles in place, like never raise your voice against your wife. Never command her to do something, bring me food or sit down there. What did I say? Did I tell you this? You know, what do you mean? You know, don't you know this? Never use commanding tone to talk to your wife. Never, as a principle. So never command or shout and, or relate to your wife as the boss. You are not. You are, you, you are partners and you are, you are the best of friends. Because that makes a woman to lose trust and to lose confidence. Number two, make sure that you prove to her from every, with every opportunity you've got that you value her more than anything else in, the, in your life, that she's the most important. Do anything you want to prove to her 
that there is nothing more important than her in your whole life. You could pr do that in different ways. Like one of the ways that I do that is that I come back home, any money that I got from the ministry or anywhere, any money that comes to my hand, I just give the envelope to her all the time. I never have even money for offering. Wow. I make myself dependent on her so that she knows that she controls my life. That I make myself dependent on her on purpose to just instill trust into her. Make sure, that's one of the ways, for example, that I do. You know, for example, I ask, another way is that I you know, ask after her every day, after her well-being every day, several times. How do you do? Are you fine? Are you okay, princess? You know, all that. You know, so th that is making sure that my life circles and circulates around her, that she is the most important. Nothing is more important. Not the children, not the ministry, not people in the church. She is, she is just a princess. She is, I call my wife princess. So she is just the most important thing in my life. Not, nothing even come clo comes close to her. Now, number three, you must let her know that there is nobody you respect more than her in your life. Like, for example, I respect my spiritual father or spiritual mentor. I respect my friends. But when my wife comes to the stage, nothing compares. So other people can talk to me or they can correct me or they can do something. But our own world stands in our own class. So she is the one, she knows that. And let her know yeah. that she's, a, she's an order for, for, for you. Uh, f I tell my wife that her wishes are my command. That whatever you wish, you just need to desire it. That it becomes a command to me. You know? So when you instill that kind of trust and, con and you know, uh, faith into your wife, making her to know that she's in charge, she's in control, <laughs> you don't have a problem. Then, of course, definitely, uh, other minor things like you must find time for her. That's part of making her know that you value her. Uh, the next one is that you must, you know, let her know that she, there is no problem she has in her life that you will not handle, that you are there for her. You just need to let her know all the time that you are there for her. You don't have any problem. I'm here. Anything, what is it? Tell me about it. Listen, make sure you listen to her as much as possible and make sure you just prove to her <laughs> you are, I, there is a, there is a, you, you know, that she can put her head upon your chest. That there, is, uh, there are stronger arms behind her. That she's like in a, in a, in a, in a, uh, in a, for, uh, in a what fortress. fortress. That you are her fortress. Of course, the Lord is her fortress, but let her know that you are like a fort to her. You are, he, you are just there for her as the defense and a protector. Wonderful. And of course, you must be romantic to her. Make sure you bring her at least maybe weekly some notes of your love or cards or sign of your love, maybe touch or some little, you know, little, little things, a romantic stuff or flowers or gifts. Just do something to always know, let her know that, hey, I never forget about you. I'm always thinking about you. Wonderful. When you said finding time for her, what do you mean by that? Is it taking her out or? Yes, including others, anything what she wants to do. So what do you say to somebody, even some cases, a pastor who said, listen, my wife is a, is a witch in my life that's hindering the ministry from moving forward. So I'm even thinking of you know, you know, divorcing her. It's happened several times before. If she's the witch, then you are the wizard. <laughs> <laughs> So take care of yourself first. <laughs> they will take care of your wife. <laughs> Serious. You, you are supposed to have open your eyes to that wish before you marry that wish. She only became a wish because she started living with you. Yeah. She was a beautiful bride before you married her. Then marrying to her, you turned her to a witch. <laughs> because the attitude of a man dictates the response of the woman. Women are responsive by nature. They, they, they are receivers and responders. So for example, men are the givers. We give love, we give sperm that becomes seed and they respond by, through pregnancy and delivery. 
you know, the men are the aggressors, we approach them, then they respond. So that is the, just the way God makes it. Men has to initiate something. What men sow, sow into women is what make them to respond and to, to become. So whatever we see in women are actually the result of whatever we have sown into them. Wow, that's heavy stuff. <laughs> that's why God said, they didn't, God didn't start with the woman. God said, you love yours, your wife first. If you go love her first, then she will be obedient to you. Wonderful. You don't want her to be obedient first before you love her. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> it's the opposite. <laughs> Jesus came to die first. He's the bridegroom. He's like the husband. He came to prove his love first. Then we could be obedient to him. Wow. So we respond. He initiates. Wonderful. Wonderful. And another area, a heavy one, divorce. The Bible says God hates divorce. But then these days, when you quote that to some Christians, they say, yes, he hates divorce. That's Old Testament. But in the New Testament, Jesus says divorce is allowed on this condition, that if the other partner is unfaithful. But then, on the other hand, you even get cases where there's no unfaithfulness, but divorce still goes ahead, even in the kingdom. So what can you tell us about divorce itself and about scenarios like what we're talking about? Yes, Jesus said that God made them men and female and female. That is to say, God intended them to be together and not to be divorced. He said, let what God has put together, let no man put us in there. That's all in the New Testament. So God really hates divorce. He doesn't want that to happen, whatsoever the case might be. If I find my wife shitting on me, or going out with another white man, I would not divorce her. Even if that happens, I will try my best to forgive her. I will forgive her definitely, even before she does. Even now, she will never do it because she's such a powerless lady. But even if she does it, I, I already intend in my own heart right now that that will happen. I know nobody knows. Even if that happens, I'm already, I've already forgiven her even before she does it. Wow. And she knows it. I told her, don't we, you don't need to worry about that. Even if anything happens, I, you are already forgiven. Wow. So no, that's just like the way Jesus related to me. That's how, it, that's how God relates to me. I'm still not perfect, and he's still forgiving me. So if I remember how he forgives me of my first up to now, it will be wickedness not to forgive anybody, no matter what they do against me. But yet, we must still recognize the fact that, yes, Jesus does give some conditions when, when it might be possible to, div to allow divorce, even though he hates it. But sometimes, uh, you know, in, in life, that might be the only way out. For example, uh, if the un unbelieving husband or, or wife separates and leaves, then the, man cannot, the, hus the believer cannot do anything in such a situation. So divorce might be possible, might be uh, po the only possibility. That's in one case, when it involves unbelieving wife or husband that lives first. Not the believer lives, but the unbeliever lives. Continue the topic. Yes, I, I want to thank you so much for this. We're going to continue because I know there's a lot more to come. Yes, uh, I want to thank you for watching. And you know what? There's a lot more to come. And, I, and these programs are designed to wake you up so that you do the right thing and you don't carry on in ignorance because God wants to do awesome things through your life. Thanks for watching and we'll be back your way very soon. God bless you and thanks again. 300 Christians needed to change the spiritual temperature of this nation forever. Are you one of them? The Bible says creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. For this end time, you don't have to be a pastor or someone in a leadership position in a church to be part of this great move of God. All you need is a genuine hunger for the kingdom of God to be established on earth. Pastor Sunday Adelaja, the pastor of the largest church in Europe, the Embassy of God, is initiating a move of God in this nation called the History Makers Bible School. The History Makers Bible School takes place only on one Saturday every month to equip you for the next level. It will also be a good opportunity to network with like-minded Christians you will receive tried and tested keys to church growth and pastoring without tears at the Emmanuel Center, 9 to 23 Marsham Street, Victoria, London, Southwest 1P 3DW. Registration is £40 per session. To register, call 
0798-114-6157 or email admin at hmbsuk.org or visit the website at www.hmbsuk.org. Whatever you do, don't miss this move of God. Call the number on the screen now to register. Remember, you are called for a time like this.